guys welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video i am so happy to be standing here finally filming it has been six long weeks since i've been on youtube or well like five and a half but still same shit and you guys know why i've been you know mia on the tube this coming monday i will be approaching my six weeks as far as recovery so i felt like it was a pretty good time to sit down with you guys or will not sit technically stand with you guys and just chat with you and let you know everything like beginning to end what i'm doing how i'm doing it if you're not aware of what procedure i actually went through let me just break it down for you i had liposuction with fat transfer into the buttocks essentially called a brazilian butt lift areas which i got lipoed from were basically just like my back my flanks which is your love handles and a little bit right into the hips just a tiny bit and then i had all of that transferred into the booty area now the reason that i did that was just because i'm very square or i was very very square prior to my procedure i had no shape i mean no shape and my back didn't have like that curve that makes you know that creates the illusion of having a booty so it just all looked like literally like a square like a little triangle actually what my doctor did was uh really aggressively took out as much fat as possible from my backside and that is basically right here in this area i hope you guys can see so he took out a bunch of fat from right here to create that illusion of having you know a nice little curve a nice little booty and obviously my butt did grow some from the fat transfer but i want to say that if you think getting a bbl is gonna like give you a big ass then you're mistaken because only about 60 percent of that fat actually survives when i came home from my surgery my ass was huge <laughs> but a lot of it had to do with it being so swollen you know what i'm saying and after two weeks that really does go down after four weeks it goes down even more and so basically after like a month what you see is what you're gonna get left with i also want to point out that anybody who thinks that liposuction is a way of losing weight you're so 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 wrong because you're not gonna lose weight from having liposuction all liposuction is is just contouring shaping the body creating an illusion so don't think that if you you know get lipo you're gonna like instantly be skinny because that's not the case in my one of my last videos i did share with you guys that i had hired a personal trainer and i was on a diet since my surgery i have stuck by my diet a hundred percent i want to say i've probably had like in the last two months literally i can count less than five times that I've cheated on my on my meal plan and over the last two months I have lost 10 pounds I know that 10 pounds doesn't sound like a whole lot but you have to keep in mind that I've basically been on my bed for six weeks like I've been doing the least amount of activity that I possibly can so losing 10 pounds off of just dieting is actually really good and I feel like if you want really great results and losing weight and getting toned are gonna be like hand in hand it's gonna be your best bet so i can say that i am very happy with the way that my body did come out like i finally have curves you know i have somewhat of a booty now and it's really really like the back part where that curve is that really makes it look like my butt is bigger than it was before and i'm not mad at it like i knew going into the surgery i was like okay if my ass doesn't stay as big as it is like i wasn't gonna be mad about it you know i just wanted to have something there like anything is better than not having nothing so let's talk about how i found my doctor i went on google for many months i was googling a lot of doctors around my area i live in west palm beach and you know i came across like dr miami he charged way too much he was trying to charge me like eighteen thousand dollars for the bbl and the liposuction and i was like no that's crazy talk i went to another doctor in boca raton who was going to charge me twelve thousand dollars for my procedure and then i ultimately found this doctor dr david rankin who's from aqua plastic surgery 
um, he had a really great price. I felt like I wasn't being overcharged and he's so hands-on like his bedside manner is just amazing like he's such a great doctor he really does take your time he listens to what you want and you know I told him I wanted it to look very natural I didn't want it to look like unproportionate I didn't want it to look like I had plastic surgery done so that's what he did for me so I'm not mad at my results if anybody is in my area and you're looking for a great plastic surgeon I highly recommend checking out aqua plastic surgery and they have other locations in Miami and Fort Lauderdale so if you're not necessarily in West Palm you know they are down south I decided to go with him and the day of the surgery basically what goes down is they make you take off your nail polish because they need to make sure that you're not like losing oxygen and they can tell from your nail bed so your nail polish comes off you're not allowed to have any makeup um they sanitize your whole body so basically like i got naked and in the operating room i'm literally standing like this and they're like dousing me in like that brown stuff you know to make sure that like i'm totally clean and you lay on the operating bed you know they hook you up to the anesthesia and literally within like a minute or two i just fell asleep and then when i woke up i was on a wheelchair and they were rolling me out to my mom's car so on the ride home obviously like i had to put the seat all the way down and lay on my stomach and basically the first two weeks any time that I needed to go anywhere, I had to be driven and I had to be on my belly. So I would carry a pillow around. After the two weeks, you're allowed to drive, but only if you're using a special pillow. I've seen online a bunch of girls use like the boppy pillows, which is a, which are those nursing pillows, you know, the ones that you put around your stomach and you can like bottle feed your baby. Apparently you can use that for your butt, but uh, I didn't want to do that because I felt like it was still gonna apply pressure onto the actual buttocks so I found this pillow on Amazon and it's called the bombshell booty pillow and as you can see let me get out of the way so maybe you guys can see it has like that hump right here so basically your thighs go right here this goes literally like right underneath the thigh so it doesn't touch the butt at all and it's lifting you up so wherever you're sitting there's like that much space between the seat the couch whatever it is that you're sitting on and your butt so i have been using that that's how i drive to work that's how i drive to drop off my sons at daycare and school pick them up basically anything that requires me to sit i use that now at work I switch on and off like I work in an office so I'll stand up for like 20 minutes and then I'll use the pillow and I'll actually like put my knees on it because like the carpet and the floor hurts my knees after a while so I started like sitting on this but on my knees so I'll be on my knees for like 20 minutes and then I'll put the pillow on my seat and I'll sit for 20 minutes and I basically just rotate that for the four or five hours that I'm at work and I'm not gonna lie, sitting on it for too long is pretty uncomfortable, but you get used to it. And by this point, I'm already used to it. Yeah, technically I'm not supposed to put any pressure on the booty for six weeks, so I am staying true to that and I have been off of it. And I'm gonna probably even wait, maybe until I hit eight weeks, just to be like super, super, super sure that the fat that's there doesn't die and I don't squish it to death. I want it to stay nice and molded the way it is now. So as far as peeing in my last video, I know I told you guys like I was using a cup or just like standing over the toilet seat. Well, I actually found this little device on Amazon as well and it's by the brand Go Girl. I'm gonna link both these in my description bar below. So if anybody is planning on doing any of the same stuff that I'm doing, this is definitely gonna come in handy. The pillow was $70 but it is worth it because you're you're gonna need it. And then this little bad boy was only $12, I believe. So basically like you just, I mean, come, come on guys, it's pretty much self-explanatory. It's like having a penis to pee. So you just place this in between your legs and you're standing and you pee right in the toilet bowl. And then you rinse it off, wash it off, you know, but this has really come in handy because it even like rolls up. It's really, really like flexible. And I just put it in my purse, take it with me for, to work or wherever I go. And if I need to pee, then, you know, 
I have a way of peeing. So that's been really helpful. Now, as far as doing number two, <laughs> I just have my back to the toilet seat and <laughs> I kind of like, I don't squat, but I stand over the toilet, you know what I'm saying? Like with my legs all the way open and I just pop my booty out enough so that whatever comes out goes into the toilet. I have not been squatting. I have not been sitting to poop. Um, like I said, I don't want to take any chances of killing any of my fat. So there's no other easier way to poop than to just kind of play around in the toilet and see what you feel comfortable doing. Um, the first couple days, like the first week, I really recommend taking laxatives, not laxative, but like Miralax, you know, cause that's like a natural stimulant. Um, you're gonna be really constipated. I was so constipated. I was constipated like the first four days, you know, because you have all this medication running through you and it just suck. Like the amount of pain that I was in was, I was just miserable. And you know, your elbows start hurting because you're on your elbows all day long. And I'm not gonna lie, my shoulders still hurt just because it's been so many weeks that I've been relying like on my arms. You do have to take like antibiotics, muscle relaxers. Uh, they gave me Percocet. I honestly only took the Percocet the first day, the first or second day, and along with the muscle relaxers. But then afterwards, like I was like, no, I don't like the way it makes me feel. So I pretty much just sucked it up. I've also been taking iron because I am anemic. I take vitamin D. Um, I take probiotics and what I've been doing because I read that protein was really really good for you as far as uh, making sure that like that fat that they inserted into you you know stays alive is protein like I've been using whey protein every morning I have a spinach banana whey protein <laughs> almond milkshake like every single day that's basically my breakfast for the last two months and i have noticed that it's made such a huge difference in keeping the booty really nice and plumped so yeah i would recommend just doing your research and seeing you know what you can do to really make sure that the fat that's being transferred lives it stays there and it stays the way it does as far as the garment the faja um my surgeon gave me a faja or sorry i'll say garmin because not everybody speaks spanish but they gave me a garment it comes you know it's included with the surgery i wore that for the first two weeks and basically i don't have it anymore but it's like you know those shorts they're like those long shorts that go down to your knee and then they go up to your stomach and uh, they have an opening obviously like you know so you can pee and do your business so after the two weeks, the garment became a little loose. It was actually a size large. And I think they do that because you're like, you're so swollen at first and you can't, I mean, you have to apply pressure to the areas, but you don't want it to be too, too, too tight because then you're going to kill the fat. So it has to be like in between. After the two weeks, I switched into a different garment that my sister brought back for me from Peru. And it looks like this. Um, let me see. You guys can see it. It's like a full body faja. And let me just. And obviously, it has like mesh on the booty part right here. So. And it has its opening right down there as well. Now, the size faja that I'm wearing right now is a medium. And it is getting kind of loose on me as well. I just noticed a couple days ago. So, I am going to invest in buying. A smaller one because I have lost weight and yeah it's time to get that waist nice and tight so I will be doing that they say to wear the garment for six weeks but when I was talking to my doctor he was like look after six weeks you can take it off but I would recommend wearing like Spanx because you still want to apply some pressure to the area that you got lipoed and so I was thinking us Spanish people I don't know about y'all, but us Spanish people, we swear by fajas. <laughs> so, like, for instance, Julia, she's Colombian, and we all know Colombians are, like, the queens of plastic surgery. So when she tells me something, I'm like, yeah, she probably right. They know what they're doing in Colombia. You know, she told me that it would be really good to wear it for at least, like, three months, and she's probably really right. I'm probably going to be living in a faja for 
couple more weeks to be honest but I did want to share with you guys that like I did take it off this past Friday I finally went out for the first time and then on Monday which was Memorial Day I also went out and this particular faja that I have on right now like no matter what I wear you can see through it you know what I'm saying like it's just it shows so I wore Spanx high-waisted Spanx and I wore very loose clothes like I think the first outfit that I wore on Friday was like biker shorts and a crop top and then when I went out on Monday I wore like these really stretchy uh, high-waisted shorts but they're like super stretchy they're not made out of jean or anything like that with a crop top as well so um, my doctor told me not to wear jeans because like it can you know squish the butt too much so like the type of pants that I've been wearing like for instance to go to work I've been wearing dresses with like little cardigans and then I've been wearing like those jeggings basically not leggings but jeggings they look like jeans but they're made out of like legging material that's what I've been wearing um, because it's not applying too much pressure on the butt let's see what else what else can I tell you guys um I can't paint my toenails like that shit sucks bending over really hurts I mean not so much now but like the first couple weeks when I had to like you know bend over and do shit it hurt because you're stretching that skin, you know, and that skin is getting tight from wearing the garment and everything. It's getting used to like a new form, a new shape. So I will tell you guys that doing like bending movements and stuff like that, it does hurt. You're just uncomfortable and it's gonna, you're gonna be uncomfortable for a couple more months. If the pain doesn't go away instantly. I mean, my doctor told me, he was like, look, you're gonna be uncomfortable. It's gonna, it's gonna happen and you know, after six weeks, you have to push yourself to just get back to normal. One last thing about the garment. Taking the garment off, like the first couple weeks, you're going to feel really heavy. Like whenever I had to take it off to shower and stuff and wash it, oh my God, I just felt like the areas where I got lipoed and my butt, especially my butt, it just felt heavy. Like, like I was weighing myself down. And so it was almost really painful to not have the faha on. I will say that. Sex. Let's talk about sex because I'm a sexually active person. I will put that out there right now. I have no shame in my game. And so, you know, I asked my doctor like, when can I have sex? And he was like, you can have sex now. So after three weeks, you're allowed to have sex, but obviously you have to be creative. Like you're not gonna lay on your back and lay on your butt and you ruin everything that you did just for some dick. You know what I'm saying? So if you're planning on having sex, you're probably gonna be doing most of the work and just stay off your back. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Honestly, that's pretty much it. Like, I'm really happy with my results. Uh, I wish I could show you guys like my whole, whole body, but I don't wanna put that out on YouTube. If you don't follow me on Instagram, I'm gonna leave my Instagram handle down below. I have posted a picture recently from Monday night so you guys can see and like compare to my other pictures my shape has totally changed it really has and i feel like i'm gonna see 100 percent results when i start toning and i already have my personal trainer just waiting for me to go back to him so i wanna i wanna say something as far as like the fat transfer goes in the buttocks if you have cellulite on your butt having a fat transfer is not gonna like it's not gonna fix that like before i had um the brazilian butt lift I had dimples in my butt and in my head I was like oh they're gonna like inject the fat and it's gonna like fill in those gaps not so much I mean they're not as deep as they were before but it's still there and I can see them when I take my clothes off so I mean I just I'm letting you guys know that right now you know it doesn't like fix cellulite or anything of that sort um, as far as me goes I don't have very bad scarring I have one scar like on this side like basically where the cannula went in you can see the skin's like inward a little bit but that's just going to take some time for it to heal this side healed a lot faster than this side hey bubs okay let me see <laughs> <Besito. laughs> all right guys my little munchkin is home so until my next video. Bye guys.